For Comedy Hype News, I'm Dom Smith. When an idea gets thrown around in a writer's room that everyone likes, it can be unclear on who originally pitched that thought, especially when that idea becomes one of the most popular beloved characters to ever grace a sketch comedy show. Paul Mooney is often widely thought of as the creator of Homie the Clown. Keenan Ivory Wayans has made it clear that people credit Mooney with the creation, but in the wrong way. If Mooney didn't really create Homie the Clown, then of course our assumptions go to Damon, which is kind of true. Homie's partially based off of a character Damon used to do in his stand-up, but there's another In Living Color cast member who gets credit too. Oh, so let I get this straight. You want me to lower myself so that you can assume a superior position and then demand tribute? Yeah! I don't think so. Homie don't play that. You can sit on this. No, wait. You can have your knee and I can keep my dignity. What's dignity? Here, let me show you. <laughs> See how you feel right now? Yeah. Well, dignity is the opposite of that. Here's who really created Homie the Clown. As Fox was preparing to air the first episode of In Living Color in the spring of 1990, many executives at the network began to get cold feet after watching some of the content in the pilot episode. Homeboy Shopping Network, Men on Film, and The Wrath of Farrakhan were the ones that they were most worried about. They didn't want to offend too many people. The executives decided to screen the pilot for members of the NAACP and the Urban League in order to get support from those groups and avoid any potential accusations of racism. A couple of groups wanted to be brought on as consultants, which Keenan thought was a bribe. Keenan didn't like it and wouldn't even meet with them. The idea was that if Fox paid a consulting fee to those groups, they wouldn't protest the show. According to the book Homie Don't Play That by David Peisner, the NAACP attempted to pressure Keenan by asking how many black writers and producers he hired for the show. Keenan's response was asking them to send over a list of all the black writers and producers they knew. The NAACP didn't have a list, and according to Peisner, that was the end of that. At one point, Fox brought on an old black man that they said they wanted to hire as a consultant to the show. They told me how he'd marched with Dr. King and had a lump on the side of his head from when he got beat up. I said, I respect all he's done, but if he ain't got no jokes, I don't need him. He's no blacker than me. I don't need him to validate me. The criticism of having very little black writers is what caused Keenan to go hire Paul Mooney halfway through the first season. Now we all know the history of Paul Mooney, writer for Richard Pryor, including his short-lived 1997 sketch show, his 1984 children's show, 1986's JoJo Dancer Your Life Is Calling, among other projects. When word got out that he was coming to the show, there was panic among the white writers. One writer, Buddy Sheffield, doesn't remember Paul Mooney coming to the office on a regular basis. He said he'd come to the table sessions and all he remembered Mooney saying was, oh no homie, whenever he disagreed with a sketch that somebody pitched. When Paul was at the writer's table, we'd be discussing a topic, and when it got into his wheelhouse, everybody waited to see what Paul was going to say. He had this booming voice. Oh, I'm gonna go there, homie. According to the same book, it has been reported that Keenan had given Mooney special treatment around the office. An example of the type of treatment that Mooney would receive would be putting him in the worst office in the building. In addition to this, whenever lunchtime would come around, Keenan made sure that no one took Mooney's order. According to Keenan, the idea was to keep him agitated. Paul is funniest when he's angry. If you look at his act, whenever Paul would do TV, he'd never be funny because he'd have to try to be nice. When you'd see him in the club and he was pissed, he was brilliant. I wanted that energy out of him. One of the producers remembers that Keenan would have everybody mess with Mooney. Mooney's usual response, oh homie don't play that. Technically, Mooney never physically wrote any of the show's sketches while he was on staff. Despite this, he's usually credited as the creator of one of In Living Color's most beloved characters, Homie the Clown. Originally conceived as a sketch about an ex-con forced to work as a clown as a part of his parole agreement, Homie takes his hatred out of the man and the system out on the children he's hired to entertain. Let me get this straight. Does this job require me to debase and degrade myself for the amusement of these little children? Yep, you got it, kid. It's funny because people will attribute Homie to Paul, but in the wrong way. Paul didn't come up with Homie. Paul was the inspiration for Homie. Homie is Paul Mooney. Instead of an angry comedian, he's an angry clown. He's a guy whose job it is to be funny, but he's the antithesis of that. One of the show's writers, Matt Wickline, produced an idea for Homie after seeing Mooney around the office. Damon Wayans would also add elements of a character he created in his stand-up called The Angry Comic. The voice of Homie is from The Angry Comic. Basically, he comes out and goes, good evening, Whitey, or would you prefer Ofe White Devil Cracker Hunky Trash? A very funny thing happened on my way down here tonight. I killed three white people. I guess you have to be there. You would have been dying. That was Homie's voice. Homie the Clown was a breakout hit for In Living Color, usually used as a critique that the white world was against the black man. 
As the character would develop over the next few seasons, Peisner says that Homie often felt like an alternative mouthpiece for Keenan and Damon to express their frustrations with the show, the Fox network, their own careers, and the white world around them. Another reason why Mooney may be so closely tied to Homie the character is because the humor is pretty much the same. I want you to meet Mr. Establishment. Tell the nice people how you've tried to keep Homie down. Well, I've structured society in such a way that men like Homie face nearly impossible odds of ever achieving any sort of educational opportunity. Therefore, they're unable to obtain gainful employment, thus forcing them to turn to an alternate source of income. Sooner or later, they just end up in jail, just like Homie. The jokes in the Homie sketches were less jokes, but more truth. Keenan knew that if he put his politics on the air too nakedly, he'd come across as angry. The homie sketches allowed In Living Color staff, particularly Keenan and Damon, to air out their grievances behind a guy in a bright red wig and big clown shoes. Okay, you go first. Move five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, you've landed on Bobo's Park Place. I wanna buy it. Now how can you buy it if you're only making minimum wage and you got a wife and two kids and a man's raising your rent? I don't know. Exactly, so you go to jail. In a 2015 interview with Uproxx, Damon explains his side of the creation for Homie the Clown and where it came from. It was his subconscious voice. I used to do a character in my act, The Angry Black Comic. I actually did it on Saturday Night Live. And then Paul Mooney, he was the angriest black man in the world, and he prided himself on that. Like, he wouldn't even pitch ideas for sketches in front of white people. Not in front of the white people, homie. One on one, me and you, Keenan, and I'll tell you everything. Not in front of the white people. And he would say, homie, you know, homie this, homie that, oh, homie, not in front of the white people, homie. So this guy, Sandy Frank, these are writers, and Matt Whitline said, you know, this is funny. The clown who won't perform. So they wrote homie the clown, and I put the angry black man voice on homie the clown because I just thought it was appropriate, and the rest is history. Homie the Clown remains one of the most popular characters in the history of In Living Color. Reportedly, there was even a film based on the character in the works before production got shut down. According to the book by David Peisner, it was during a time where Keenan, Sean, and Marlon were trying to get their film White Chicks Greenlit. We pitched White Chicks and there was a bidding war that ended with Sony making the best offer. The guy who was at Fox at the time got pissed and pulled the plug on Homie the Clown. We were two days before shooting Homie. White Chicks going to Sony created problems with Fox, which was developing the Homie film. We got close. I wish we would have done it. I still wish we could do it. In Living Color is where racially charged and political sketches met stupidity. Homie the Clown was the perfect marriage between the two. Undeniably silly, but with the influence of Damon Wayans and Paul Mooney, it eventually became commentary on how the white world is against the black man, while not sacrificing any laughs, which is what In Living Color was about first and foremost. Stay up to date with the latest news in comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel, follow Comedy Hype across all social media, and look out for original content on our new streaming service at ComedyHype.com. For Comedy Hype news, Dom Smith don't play that.